And as I always, we'll start with an intention. An intention can be something you would like to achieve or a personal goal. You can offer it for somebody that you want to send that energy to. Personally, my intention today will be an intention of gratitude. Gratitude for this year of yoga that we've had together. Gratitude for our resilience, for our willpower to get up, to come to class, no matter what. Last week a student sent me a message saying, oh, I was a bit yogurt out and I didn't feel like doing it, but then I did it and I feel a lot better for it. And I feel my yoga spirit reignited. It happens to all of us. It happens to me. Sometimes I think, oh, I wish I didn't have to do this class today. And then I come here and I find you and I find your smiling faces and everything else doesn't matter anymore. And bringing your hands together, bow to your heart, bow to your intention, open your eyes. And we're going to start with a pranayama fire mudra with the thumbs facing upwards. And this is how it's going to work. We're going to have the arms up in a V, but with the shoulders relaxed. And we're going to do Kapalabhati breath. Active exhalation, you can, you can rest whilst I'm explaining. <laughs> Active exhalation, passive inhalation. We're going to do 50 breaths. The Kapalabhati breath is not new to any of you. Maybe Chandralaka a little bit new for you, but just try to, to do it. We're going to do a little practice run. And then Vivian as well, maybe it's not super um, usual for you to do that. When we finish the 50 breath like, like this, we're going to bring the thumbs together and the Garuda Mudra, the, the Eagle Mudra, and Bring the belly in and bring the chin towards the chest and hold the breath for as long as we can. It's important to have the lungs completely empty as you do that. And your abdomen will come in and out like this. So you will go. Yes, clear? Good, likely we are between friends, showing my belly. <laughs> a woman of my age should not do those things. <laughs> or maybe should, I don't know. I do wear bikinis in the summer, so. <laughs> All right, so we're going to, uh, do we have questions about it? Is that clear? Yes, can I see the thumbs? Good. So let's practice the Balabati breath just for a moment. You can be seated on um, the hero's pose or diamond pose like this. You can also have a cushion between your seat and your heels, or you can be seated cross-legged. If all of this is uncomfortable, you can sit with your legs outstretched, or you can sit on a chair. Whichever way works for you, just be as grounded as you can be. I like to have my shins underneath just to have more space on my abdomen. Bring your hands onto your abdomen. We're just gonna do 10 rounds of Kapalabhati breath. Exhale, exhale, exhale. And you, when you exhale, the belly goes in. Okay, you inhale to begin. And relax. So see that I'm not pressing with my fingers. 
my belly is moving. Look at that kitty, <laughs> Yolanda, it's adorable. <laughs> All right, let's do 50 of those. If you get dizzy, you can stop. If you need to stop before the 50, if you can, you know, you're going to be like this, then belly in. If you can, if you need to stop before the 50. If you lose count, I will be counting, so don't worry about it. All right, when you're ready, bring your arms at a 45 degrees angle, thumbs facing inwards, but upwards. So we are not bringing the hands like that, we're having the arms in an anatomical position. That's it, very good, Buster. And we're going to start, try to relax and it will have start inhaling. Hold your breath, exhaling fully. <sighs> and you need to inhale. Inhale deeply, exhale fully. We're going to do another round. So when you bring your arms up, hands go in Garuda Mudra and your arms need to be straight and your belly goes in. So the thumbs are pulling away from each other like that. Very good, very good. And yeah, that's it. And the belly goes in and up. Did you all, were, were you all able to do that? Yes, or feel it a little bit? So what we're doing when we bring the belly in and up is we are forcing the diaphragm to go high up, exhaling all of the air from the lungs. And we are also massaging the internal organs with our abdominal muscles. And we all have abdominal muscles, more or less developed. None of you have fewer muscles than others. <laughs> all right. By the way, if you had a big breakfast just before now, don't do a second round <laughs> because your breakfast might come out. <laughs> so just this type of breathing is to be done on an empty stomach. Or maybe if you had a little bit of cereal an hour or two hours before now, that's fine. But if you had a full English, not good. <laughs> Here we go again. Hands at a 45 degrees angle. And you can close your eyes to begin. 50 Kapalabhati breaths. Inhale. Hold. <sighs> Wonderful. Now we're going to bring ourselves up into standing. Tuck your toes under and come up into standing. Make sure that you have your feet bared. 
so that you don't slide. During the winter, we have we have been sometimes wearing socks, but today I would like you to be able to feel the floor with your feet if possible. Good. So bring your feet hip distance apart and spread your toes. So hip distance is the position that when you bend your knees, you can see your big toes and your little toes are covered by your knees. Or you bring the heel onto the arch of the foot and where the ball of the foot is, that is your hip distance. Lovely, good. And your knees are soft, your shoulders are soft. We're going to start by bringing, bring that right arm across the ribs. And just let the left arm come back and forth. And then see if you can do the full circle with your arm without moving your ribs. So normally, if you're not holding or you're not paying attention, your chest will move backwards. I'm asking you to keep the stability of the chest and change the direction. Feel your abs having to work for you to stay in this position. Lovely, shake and change sides. So start just swinging your arm back and forth. And then bring the arm around. Slowly, there is no rush. We can go as slow as we need to. Just feel the difference between the right and left side. This arm, I feel it more sticky as I'm coming to the angle. So I breathe into it, try to reach and bring it round and change the direction. And maybe on the way back, you don't feel it that much. You, it's, it goes easier forwards than it does backwards. Good, and shake. So keep your feet hip distance apart. Make sure you have a bit of room. We're going to swing the arms and let the knees bounce as you do it. That's it, bounce and bounce and bounce and bounce. And when you're ready, let the arms go round and bounce, bounce and bounce, and around the other way. Bounce and bounce, and around the other way. Bounce and bounce, and around the other way, and the other way. Keep going. <laughs> That's it. And around. And around. <laughs> Good. <laughs> we have lots of different versions in here. That's fantastic. <laughs> we have had dancing and moving. <laughs> Great. So what we're doing here is just letting the um, shoulder um, ball and socket articulation work. So now we're going to try and do it with the ball and socket on the hips. But these ones will not be jumping all, all over the place because otherwise we will fall over. So just bring it around. And can you go the other way? So from back to front, back to front, back to front, and back to front. Good. And let's articulate our wrists. Give me a bit of a volare. Volare, oh, cantare, oh. Very good. And now we're going to flick the fingers. Flick the fingers, flick the fingers, flick the fingers. You can keep your elbows up, flick the fingers. Flick, flick, flick. Keep flicking and breathing. This will make your forearms, come on Yolanda, flick, flick, flick. It will make your forearms work hard. We're strengthening the 
um, forearms and the wrist and relax. Oh, hopefully you felt that. Let's move the toes and the ankles. That's it, and the other side. Lovely. And we're going to bring the feet hip distance apart and bring the arms around and up. Opening the chest, bring the hands together. Inhale here, exhale, soften the knees and fold forward. Let your upper body be heavy towards the floor. Inhale and exhale. Inhale, bring your fingertips onto the floor. Straighten your legs and straighten your back. Exhale, release your head and shoulders. And roll up into standing. Inhale, bring your arms up. Hold onto your right wrist and arch sideways. And to the other side. Inhale, baby back bend. Exhale, fall forward. Inhale, hands onto your shins, flatten your back. Exhale, hands by the sides of your feet. Take your time to bring your right leg back. Release the back knee onto the floor and let your hip go forward. Breathe deeply. Bring your, right, your left forearm into your left knee and bring your right arm up. And maybe you just keep it there. Maybe you arch towards the side. So I show you front, front wise. So we try to arch sideways or otherwise we stay up. Good. And bring your hands onto the floor. Bring your left leg back. Keep your chest towards the front of the mat. Knees are on the floor, your hips are at 45 degrees angle. And inhale here, exhale, come 90 degrees. Inhale, push up. Exhale, 90 degrees. Inhale, push up. Exhale, 90. Inhale up. And coming down and up. Two more. Make sure your elbows are not coming out. Last one. And Balasana or Uttita Balasana. Uttita Balasana is with your fingertips forwards, forehead on the floor. Balasana, child's pose is with your hands by the sides of your shins. Just stay down, Viv. I'm just checking that everybody's doing it. So when you're in Balasana, you can, you can open your knees so that your chest fits between your, your thighs. Or if you want to stretch your lower back a little bit more, then your knees come together and you drape your body um, over your thighs. That's it, very good, lovely. From Balasana, come into Uttita Balasana, which is with your hands forwards, Look towards your hands, tuck your toes under, downward facing dog. Inhale, look towards your hands, lift your heels, bend your knees, step or jump forwards. Exhale, fall forwards, inhale, coming up, and exhale, release, good. So we're going to do it again. Remember to do the side stretch. Inhale, arms up, baby back bend. Exhale, head back to center and stretch, holding onto one wrist, stretch into the side, hold into the other wrist and stretch sideways. And exhale, fold forward, swan dive. Inhale, hands onto your shins and flatten your back. Exhale, hands by the sides of your feet and bring your left leg back, releasing the left knee onto the floor, release the shin. Breathe deeply. Bring your 
forearm, your right forearm onto your right thigh and bring your left arm up. You can keep the left arm just upwards or maybe stretch it sideways. Give it more of an emphasis on stretching your hip flexor, your psoas muscle. And release. Bring your leg back into plank. So we are doing supported plank. Keep your knees onto the floor and come forward. But take a, an easy all fours position so that I show you something. I saw a couple of you going like this. We don't want to go sideways. The elbows need to bend backwards. So if I show you on the side, my chest is coming forwards and my elbows come by the sides of the body. If you have blocks, you can use them to check that your elbows are staying sideways and your body's coming down. If you have blocks and you want to, to challenge your plank, you can bring a block just underneath your belly. And from here, come on up and down, just touching your belly onto the block without resting so that you know that you shouldn't go further than that at this point, okay? If you don't have a block, you can use a cushion, otherwise don't use anything. We, having blocks is a really good investment. If you haven't got them yet, you can use your imagination and just have your cushion or, or a blanket underneath. Okay, we're going to do seven repetitions. When you're ready, Elbows by the sides of the ribs. Don't let them go out. If you can't go very far down, it doesn't matter. Just a little bit. Come over the wrist for one. And two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. And child's pose. Toes together, knees apart. You can release your head. Between, if you want to stretch your wrists, you bring your hands by the sides of your neck, between your neck and your shoulders. <sighs> Good. And inhale. Bring your hands forwards. Look towards your middle finger. Tuck your toes under. Come into your downward facing dog. Walk your dog if you need to release your hips or your calf muscles. Look towards your hands. Lift your heels. Step or jump. Flat back. Exhale, fall forwards. Inhale, coming up. And exhale, release. Good. Shake. And we're going to do a little bit of balancing. So I put my mat at a diagonal so that you can see me better and I can see you as well. If you need to rearrange where you are practicing, you can always do that. Bring your hands towards your heart. And catch your breath. Those press ups can take us out of breath. Inhale, bring your right knee up and exhale, bring your right knee behind your left knee. Like if you were just running, like a cartoon. Now, bring your chest down towards the floor, keeping the knee behind, your right knee behind your left knee. But at the same time, it's a little bit easier to balance. Bring your hands by the sides of the foot and try to bring your belly onto your thigh. Now from here, can we bring the right leg into a 90 degree angle? The belly is still stuck to the thigh. 
the left knee is bent, the right knee is bent, and the right foot is flexed. Can you straighten your left knee? Keep the right knee bent. Good. Now, can you straighten your right leg? This is a standing split. And release your leg onto the floor. Whew. Breathe. That can be quite intense. Open your chest, feel your front foot on the floor, and extend your right, your left leg, your left knee, sway side to side. This is half Hanumanasana. Let your forehead come towards the shin. And come forwards and let your back leg go a little bit further back. And let the front leg extend, bring your hips back, feel your calf muscles and your hamstrings. Your front knee needs to be straight. And Bend the knee. Bring both hands to the inside of your left foot. And reach down towards the floor. So we are, my body is a bit away from the knee. We are like in a lizard pose, but on the diagonal. If the floor feels too far, you can bring your hand onto your knee and have your right hand on the floor. Your left hand is on the left knee, right hand on the floor. Otherwise, forearm onto the ground. You can keep your left hand on the left knee if the left knee is going inwards too much. Lovely. And bring your hands back towards you. Tuck your back toes under, swivel your feet and come into Prasadita Padakunasana. White legged forward fold. You can rest your forearms on the floor or your crown of the head on the floor. And walk your hands all the way towards the front of the mat. Bring your hands firmly on the ground, leg back into plank. Swivel backwards and forwards on your toes. So feeling that front body be really strong. Once you are over your wrists, on the tops of your toes, bend your elbows and hover. Hover, hover. Roll your toes, come up into ab dog. Roll your toes, downward facing dog. Breathe. Three more breaths in here. Check that your head is relaxed. Look towards your hands, lift your heels, bend your knees. Step or jump, flat back, exhale, fall forwards. Inhale, coming up and exhale. Release, shake your arms, shake your legs. So you would have seen that when we start with our knees bent, sometimes this allows us to get a little bit further. For the Hanumanasana poses, if you have blocks, you can also use the blocks to give you a bit more room to work if hands on the floor are not comfortable. This, guys, is the same as when we go into a forward fold and we rest the thighs, we rest the ribs onto the thighs and then slowly bring your legs straight, trying to keep the belly stuck to the thighs. 
Now that we're going to standing splits, so we are practicing a bit of splits today. The standing splits, we start in here, we come down and we get comfortable. We get all of those muscles on the feet working hard. Then we start trying to straighten the knee. We bring the leg back. Then we straighten first the standing leg and then the leg that is above and see if that can help us come into the standing splits. So I'm going to come closer and I'm going to come out to you and you're going to try it. Let's start together from this stretch and then I go to watch you. Inhale, arms up. Exhale. Coming back to center, left knee comes towards the chest. Bend the standing leg and hook the left knee behind the right knee. As if you were running, that's it. And then keep your hands going down. Keep your thighs close together so that you have more help. That's it, good. Now, try to keep your thighs stuck, your belly stuck to your thigh. And bring the other leg, bring the left leg up into a 90 degree angle. Then slowly keeping the, the chest onto the thigh, start straightening the standing leg. And now try straightening the leg that you have up and try to bring it up towards the sky. Is there a name? It's not something that I would be expecting to see any of you doing. Good, one more breath in there. Looks good and very good. And release the back leg. Lisa, it looks good as well. Release the left leg onto the floor. Ah. Open the chest. The front knee is above the ankle and breathe deeply. Feel that opening on your hip flexors and your hamstrings and bring your hips back. Stretch that right leg that was working so hard. You can bring your forehead towards your shin. And inhale, bring yourselves forwards. Tuck your toes under and see if you can shuffle your knee back a little bit more. Breathe deeply. Great. Now bring your leg back and see if you can slide it forwards a bit more. And Bring your chest towards your thighs. And come forwards, bring both hands inside your right knee. And your options are either the left hand is on the floor and you're bringing the right knee away, feeling the inner thigh. Or if your knee can stay upwards, you can try and bring your elbows towards the floor into this semi um, lizard pose. Fabulous. Bring your hands back to center, lift the back heel, swivel your feet and come into your white legged forward fold. You can rest your head on the floor. For those of you that have been practicing for a little bit longer, if you want to put in a headstand, a white legged headstand from here, you can. If you haven't done it before, please don't. <laughs> this takes a bit of time and I am not there to catch you. To come down, you come down really gently. And walk your hands back towards the front. 
bring the leg back into plank. Come backwards and forwards on your toes until your chest is over your wrist. Bend your elbows 90 degrees. Hold it. Hold it. And up dog. Down dog. <sighs> Look towards your hands. Lift your heels. Bend your knees. Step or jump. Flat back. Exhale, fall forwards, inhale, coming up. Exhale, come onto the balls of your feet and come down into sitting. Ah. I'm making us work hard today, aren't I? Good, it's good for us. <laughs> We're going to come into a cat holding its tail twist and stretch. So we have a we have been working hard on the legs, all of these stabilizings on the hips are tough to, to do. You might want to use a block for this one. You might want to use a belt or a scarf and I will show you why and how. So the cat holding its tail, consists of one leg coming underneath and you're holding that one and the other one coming on top and you're holding that one as well. The knee that is underneath will be trying to be straight out and the other one will come across and by you holding onto the hand and leg and uh, onto the two feet with the hands you will be stretching the chest. So if I show you from this side, if you couldn't reach, you can use one belt or two belts. So once you are in the position, you can really stretch your hips and your arms. If this is not available to you, then just maybe hold the bottom foot and the top leg you put the hand over the thigh and that's it. And if this is not available at all, then come into a simple twist with both knees together. Be honest with yourselves and do what's right for you. Using belts are a good way of reaching. You can also use it on the leg that goes across. So the leg that is across can have a belt. Find your way. Let's uh, lay onto the ground to start with. I took you through it. And you're gonna have a full body stretch. It's just letting go of any tension you might have held during your Hanumanasanas, the leap of the monkey gorge. And bend your knees, feet flat on the floor, and let your knees sway side to side. <sighs> Good. Now let's start bringing the right leg across and the left knee underneath. So bring the right leg up and bring the left leg along the floor. Now bring the right leg onto the floor across into a twist. And maybe in here you think, oh, this is great, I can stay here. Or maybe you will want to bring a block underneath your right leg so that the leg is not so far down and your hip is aligned with your knee. Lift your head and shoulders, bend your left knee and hold onto your left foot bringing the leg back onto the floor. You can hold your right big toe with your index finger, middle finger and thumb. If this brings discomfort on your knees, let the leg go. Don't force the knee into a position that will not be 
beneficial. Inhale. And exhale. Whenever we find a bind, a bind is when we are holding parts of the body together, we will be able to relax more into what we're doing. Now, really gently let go of the legs. Don't let it go like an, an elastic band. Just take your time to bring your body back to center. And have a rest with your legs and arms open. Inhale. Exhale. Now we're going to go on the other side. I'm going to change position, otherwise I will hit the wall. When we're at home, we can always do that to find the most comfortable space. So the left leg is up, right leg is along the floor. We have a 90 degree angle, hopefully, between the left leg and the right leg. And bring the left leg across, open your right Open your left arm. The right hand is just gently guiding the left leg down. Bring your head and shoulders up and hold onto your right foot with your left hand. Maybe this is all that you want to do. If you want to also hold onto your left big toe, you're in a full cut holding its tail. If there is pain, you loosen up. You don't need to look for pain in yoga. You need to look for ease and breath. and relaxing in the pose. And really gently let go. Bring your legs back together. Really slowly. You're coming to short rest. Trying to find the equanimity and the body again. And for our inversion today, we're going to do shoulder stand. Actually, bring your hands underneath your knees. If you're tired, just rock into sitting. If you're not tired, we'll do a little vinyasa and I show you what we will do in our inversion. So head and shoulders up, rock backwards and forwards. If you're doing a vinyasa, cross your shins, can hands underneath your knees, push back into plank, chaturanga, up dog, down dog, and come into sitting. Good. So we're going to try the shoulder stand with our legs into a diamond shape. We have done this before. I'll show you in case you haven't done it. So to come into the shoulder stand, we'll bring the hips up. You can rest the knees up to the forehead to start with. And if you're looking at what I'm doing, I'm trying to bring my elbows in. So from where you're looking at me, you should see my head and my shoulders. And my elbows are not out here. They are behind my back. My hands are on the small of the back. And I'll bring the legs up. From here, I will bring the legs into a small V and then bring the feet, soles of the feet together. I'm not letting the legs come towards me and keeping 
the legs up and the feet up. From there, I'm gonna try and bring one hand, then the other, then both. After that, halasana, plow pose, and then release down. All right, I hope that was clear. I'm gonna see what you're doing. We only have a few minutes, so try to be on your inversion for 10 breaths. If you can't be 10 breaths, don't worry. And if you don't want to do a shoulder stand, you can bring your legs up the wall or up a sofa or a chair, something like that will be fine. If you are on your shoulder stand, so Viv, if you wanted to bring your legs up, a chair or a sofa, you can do that and just release them onto the floor. Just to have your legs up for a little bit. Good, very good, Vasta. Yes, that's it, Yolanda. Good, Tanya. Wow, and that's very good. Lisa, if you want to do the diamond shape, bring the feet up towards the sky. So the feet are up and bring one hand onto one knee. Very good, sir. Pia. We. Oui. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sometimes when I look at some people, they calm down. And the other hand on the other, the other knee. And if you can bring both hands onto each knee and push, you know, you have to make like a triangle between your shoulders and your head and the knee so that you are pushing the weight of your legs up. That's very good. And when you've had enough, come into Halasana, plow pose. Very good, Viv. And then releasing down into your fish. So in fish, we're going to bring the hands underneath the shoulders. Let the chest open and the crown of the head comes onto the floor, pointing your toes. And inhale, lift your head, release, hug your knees. And then bring your arms and legs one inch from the floor, tense, 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 make fist with your hands, point your toes, lift your head, tense your abdomen. Inhale and exhale. Let it all go. If there are any areas of your body still tense, you can tense again and let it go. For Shavasana. Make sure you stay warm. Allow yourselves to relax. So yes, wearing a pair of socks, covering yourselves up with a blanket, put in a sweatshirt, whatever you have handy to make you feel nice and comfy. Just lie down, Viv. We are now in the relaxation part. I'm just closer to you so that you can hear me clearly. But this is the most important part of the class and the best part where you get to rest. <sighs> Inhale and exhale. And ideally you will be in Shavasana until you have rested, until you have digested what you are doing. But in one hour class, we can't stay that long. 
So if you have the time, if you if you can afford it, I will let you stay on Shavasana after we finish. If you need to get up, I will bring you out. But for now, just allow your body to be supported by the ground. If you feel discomfort on your lower back, you have your you can have your feet flat on the floor and your knees bent. You can even bring your legs over a sofa or a chair. Inhale. Keep focusing on your breath, your body. I mean, if any thoughts come to interrupt you, bring the attention back to the breath and to relaxing. And stay in Shabasana as long as you can. Give yourselves a little smile because you've done it. You work for yourself on this Saturday morning. And we're going to finish the class with three arms and shanties. If you want to stay lying down, you can. Otherwise, just have a little stretch and bring yourselves up into sitting. And make sure that your back is straight, your neck is long. And we're going to finish with the three arms and shanties. Inhale to begin, inhale. Palms together, rub your palms, make the movement a little faster, and place your palms over your face. Inhale deeply. Open your eyes to the darkness of your hands, slide your hands to your chest, and bow your hips. Namaste. Give yourselves a clap. Well done. I hope you enjoyed that. Oh, thank you, Jenny. That was really hard, but really good. <laughs>